Welcome. In the next part of the course, we are going to talk about MySQL users and the privilege system. In this section, we are going to take a look at MySQL's privilege system and the differences between MySQL 8's privilege system and earlier versions. However, first we will learn how to create users and schemas or databases for application. In MySQL, the words database and schema are interchangeable, they are just referring to the same thing. First, we will discuss the basics, creating databases and users for applications. In MySQL deployments, more often than not, accounts are belonging to applications and various roles in the application as opposed to people who would be the actual users of the data at the end of the day. In this video, we are going to take a look at the privilege system of MySQL. We will also learn how to create a database in MySQL and how to create a user that has access to that database we just created. A user account is part of the connection details to MySQL. Different users can have different privileges. You might have noticed that in the first section in the labs, we use the root user. Well, almost. In MySQL, a user is actually user at host rather than just the username. The host means the host name or IP address the user is connecting from. This means that the same username with different host part can have totally different privileges, even a totally different password. For example, in the slide you can see root at 10.0.0.1 and root at 10.0.0.2 can be two different users. In lab 1 we did not really alter the root user, but the root at localhost user which is by the way the only root user at the beginning. One word on localhost as the host part, that means that user can only connect via local connection methods like Unix domain sockets and named pipes. In earlier MySQL versions, if a grant statement was issued on a non-existing user, MySQL just created the user automatically. If the user did exist, it just updated it with the new privileges. In MySQL 8, the default is no auto-create user in SQL mode, which means that the user has to be created first before issuing a grant statement. But what is this SQL mode anyway? Let's take a slight detour. SQL mode is a control variable, which controls the behavior of the SQL interpreter. For example, strict mode can be turned on here. The strict mode means there will be no automatic type or value conversion. Some of the other SQL modes are doing different things. For example, there is one for making the SQL dialect of MySQL more Oracle-like. The value of the variable is a concatenation of strings with the wanted mode. No automatic user creation in SQL mode is a new and very welcome default change in MySQL 8. Users typically access databases. So we need to create one first. That can be done with the create database SQL construct like shown in the slide. With create user first, the user can be granted access to the newly created database. The same grant statement which had an error earlier completes successfully after the create user. But what are databases in MySQL? Databases are just organizational units for a bunch of tables. For example, if a user has access to multiple databases, nothing prevents joining two tables that are in different databases. Although nothing prevents it, that's not really a good practice. Databases are really just directories on the file system with the corresponding tables or part of the corresponding tables in it. What is actually in those directories is actually storage engine and storage engine configuration and even version dependent. We will examine this a bit in the lab. In MySQL 8, the tables used by the privilege system are transactional because they're using InnoDB. In earlier versions, these tables were MyIsen. The show grants comment can be used to query a user's privileges. Without the for clause, like shown in the slide, it shows the privilege of the current logged in user. In this example, the SB test user at percent user has all the privileges on the SB test database. The percent is a special host part in MySQL, which means all the hosts except for the local connection methods. The usage in the grant statement in the slide is a synonym for no privileges. The grant user on star.star .star is a privilege that will be granted to every user upon creation, but grant usage is a synonym for no privilege, so right after user creation, the users would have no privileges. 
The user can also be found in the underlying privilege table. However, show grants is the good way to get the user's metadata because the underlying privilege tables are changing from time to time. PT show grants is another tool in Percona Toolkit and it's helpful to extract a user's metadata on the server. Let's do lab 3A together where we will create a user and the database it can use. Welcome to lab 3A. First, let's check if the virtual machine is running. Do that with the vagrant status command. It's not running. So let's start up the lab environment with vagrant app. This is going to take a while, but not for me, thanks to video editing. And we are done. Let's log into the virtual machine. Start the MySQL client. Check the existing databases. Let's check the existing users by selecting from the underlying privilege table. So these are the users we have defined. Rep is for my SQR application. This is generated by the automation I use for the labs. SB test user is for Sysbench, which is also generated by the automation I use for the labs. We will see these being used in the later labs. Let's create a new database. There we go. Let's create a user that has all the privileges on that database. So first we need to create a user Sakilat localhost and the password will be Sakila pass. So let's do that. I'm just going to copy paste this SQL. After that, if we repeat the select above, we will have the Sakila user here. Let's grant all the privileges to the Sakila database to this user. There we go. We can use the PT show grants utility to dump all the available users in SQL. So first, let's exit the MySQL command and run PT show grants. So for every single user, for example, for sbtest user at percent, these are the necessary SQL statements to reconstruct them. For root at localhost, we need these SQL statements. But where is the secular user? We can issue a PT show grants and pipe it to grab to get just the data for one user. There we go. Here we have the grants for our Sakila user. For the sake of the experiment, we can log back into MySQL and do show grants for Sakila at localhost. We would get more or less the same thing. PT show grants will also provide us a way to have the password set, but otherwise it's more or less the same. Here are the privileges which are shown by show grants for, and here are the comments that are needed to create the user. Just the password is set on a different statement. Okay, let's exit from the SSH session with Ctrl D or the exit command. And let's destroy the lab environment. That's it, we are done with lab 3A.